Hello and welcome to Let's Code an Indie Game episode 21. This is the series where we learn the tools and techniques needed to get started with indie game development. In this episode we're going to continue working on actions for our player, but first let's take a look at what we did last time. Okay, so in the last episode, uh, I'll just run our games. In the last episode, we added the ability for our player to start punching. Um, except our punch sort of entity stays on the screen forever at the moment, um, and it doesn't really do anything. So in this episode, we are going to make it only live for a certain amount of time, so it's a bit more like punching and a bit less like whatever it's like now. Okay, where to get started? So what we really need to do is have our punch entity live for a certain amount of time and then disappear. And the way we're going to do that is by introducing the concept of timers. And a timer is just going to be a function which only gets called after a certain amount of time. So uh, to start with, let's make a class to capture that behavior. So I'll go into logic, I'll make a new file, and I'll call this timer.lua. And like with most of the modules we make, we'll start by making an empty table and returning it. So we've got something we can hang functions off of, and we'll give it a create function for actually making the instance of our class. So we'll just put in the uh, boilerplate. And thinking about our timer, we really need two things right now. We may need uh, more things later, but for just to get it working for this episode, we need a duration and we need a function to call when that duration is done. So let's make sure we uh, we assign those two things. So duration equals duration and instance on done equals on done. The other thing our timer needs is a way of actually counting down. So uh, let's call it tick. Let's make a function called tick. Oops. So local tick equals function. And this will be uh, an instance method or an instance function. So self will be the first argument. And the rest of the arguments, uh, we probably want the owner of the timer because we want to be able to attach our timer to entities. Um, so they perform some behavior after a certain amount of time, so we'll have an owner and we'll also pass in our game object just so in case we need it we can get access to our global game state. And what we're going to do inside our tick function is first of all we'll say self dot uh, ticks equals self dot ticks plus one. So we will uh, tick up our timer and uh, let's just make sure we have ticks set to zero to start with down here um, when we create our timer. So we want self.ticks equals self.ticks plus one. Then we'll say if self.ticks is equal to self.duration, then we're going to call self on done. And what else do we need to do? we can finish off our if statement. Actually, that's the other thing we need to do. So if our um, timer is done, then we'll also, then we'll return uh, true. And if our timer is, actually, no, we won't, no, we won't. So instead, we'll just end this for now. So we have a timer. Our timer will tick up towards the duration. And then once uh, the number of ticks equals the duration, we will call the done method with um, owner and game, and because we're calling it as an instance method, we'll also pass in the in reference to the timer as well, or the instance of the timer. Great, so now let's, um, well first of all I'm just going to run the game and make sure nothing breaks. It shouldn't break because we're not requiring this code anywhere. So now let's actually um, modify our entity class so that entity.lua there we go, let's modify our entity class so we can attach a timer to our entities. Let's come in and say local add timer is a function. 
Again, it's an instance method, and the only other argument it really needs is the timer we want to add. And now we can say inside this method, self.timer equals timer. So we'll just set a um, we'll set a property on our entity timer equal to the timer we are passing in. And if we're adding a timer, it would be also useful to just have a remove timer method. And this will just set self.timer to nil, so we don't have to worry about it anymore. And now, um, two things. So first of all, before I forget, let's add instance add timer and instance remove timer to, to our entity. Um, or to our to the instance of our entities, so we can actually call those methods um, on the instances of our entities where we're using them. And now inside of our update method, so this currently updates all of the um, well updates everything the entity cares about um, every time the game sort of logic ticks over. We want to say if self dot timer, then um, what do we want to do? self dot timer uh, tick and we want to pass in self because self here is the entity so that's the entity which owns the timer and we'll pass in the game as well end okay so hopefully that hasn't broken anything St we still look good okay so now let's make use of our timer um, and we'll do this inside of our punch.lua um, module. So this is where we create our punch entities, which are the little sort of puffs of air which hang um, hang in front of our player when we hit the Z button at the moment. And you can see in here we just have a punch sprite and a sound that we play, and our punch is just an entity. So we should be able to use our entity add timer method so we need a timer to add so let's just say local t is timer dot create and we need to uh, require our timer code so timer equals require source dot logic dot timer is I think where we put it uh, let's just check logic timer yep so now we can create a timer. Let's give it a duration of, uh, let's say, six uh, ticks to start with. And we also need a function. So yeah, one of the nice things about Lua is we can just pass in a function as an argument. And so um, this is the function we want to call when our timer is finished. So this will take the uh, Oops, timer itself, it will take the owner, which in this case we know will be our punch entity, and it will also take the game state. And when this function gets called, we really want to just call entity done. And if we remember back to a couple of episodes ago, what entity done does, or actually we can take a look. So if we go into our entity, just a tidy up an extra line there. Go into our entity, look at done. Done just sets uh, the value finished to true. And if we look at our room class, so rooms are currently responsible for updating all of the entities inside of them. Um, you can see we have this check here, which says if an entity is finished, then we remove it from the room so we don't worry about it anymore. This basically deletes the entity from our game. So yeah, if we call done on our punch entity after um, six ticks, it should remove our punch entity. Uh, and we should get the effect of um, of it disappearing. So let's see if everything works. Oop, nope, so attempt to call method add timer a nil value. Ah, yep, so uh, it would be useful to uh, call this on punch 
rather than uh, I don't know what I was trying to do there but this we want to call punch add timer and we want to pass in our timer which is just uh, t at the moment attempt to call method tick a nil value so let's take a look at timer first of all and yep we just need to do instance tick equals tick so we can access that on the instance of our timers and there we have it so now we can punch and after six ticks our punch will disappear oops so there's one uh, more thing to neaten up with our timer for now and that is when um, we call undone we should also call owner remove timer because at the moment um, our timers will just tick up forever um, once they reach the duration they'll just keep going they won't uh, nothing will get called but um, it's just a bit it's a bit messy so we should make sure we call remove timer here just to uh, get rid of the timer on the entity so we don't uh, we just don't waste CPU cycles updating them Let's just check that works great so the other thing we can do with our timer is at the moment um, our player doesn't stop moving when they punch they just uh, they just keep going so it would be nice to just interrupt the player's movement for a couple of ticks whenever they punch because um, otherwise um, we can just sort of go like this and we get a constant trail of punches behind us so let's think about how we would do that so the first thing I'm going to do is go into keyboard movement because this is what's responsible for all of our players um, or for our player movement and let's just start off by saying right at the top if entity dot interrupt movement uh, then return end so uh, this will just short circuit all of our movement if we um, if we set interrupt movement to true on our entities and then inside of our player which we uh, don't have open yet so player.lua uh, this code here action one is what gets called when we press the Z button uh, so we did that in the last episode um, and at the moment we just add our um, punch entity to the room whenever we hit the Z button so what we're also going to do now is we'll say player dot interrupt movement equals true so now if I punch ah, I shouldn't be able to move anymore but I still can so let's uh, work out what's going on there ah, we want self not player self dot interrupt movement equals true okay now I can no longer move um, after I've punched which isn't very helpful so what we will also do is make a new timer timer equals require source logic timer um, just call it t equals timer dot create and let's set this to five seconds or five ticks not seconds sorry five ticks so slightly uh, just slightly shorter than the lifetime of our punches and what we'll do here is after five ticks we get the uh, the timer which we don't actually care about uh, the owner and the game and what we'll do in here is we will say um, owner dot interrupt movement equals false so this should allow our player to start moving again not quite oh of course the uh, final thing we have to do is self add timer 
t uh, so this will actually start using the timer on the entity and now hopefully there we go so now when we punch there's just a tiny interruption and it just feels a bit feels a bit nicer cool so I'm actually going to wrap up the episode here it's uh, a bit of a short one but the next topic is really um, dealing with the collision code between our punches and our slimes or any other entities that will probably take quite a bit of time so I want to devote a whole episode to it so um, we'll go for a short episode today but uh, you know have some fun with the timers in your uh, in your free time if you're still interested I hope you're enjoying the series so far uh, if you are feel free to uh, like and subscribe it really does help me out a lot thanks very much and I'll see you next time goodbye <laughs>